What's going on everybody and welcome back to the St. Thomas Dynasty here on NCAA 14. Your St. Thomas Tommies are here on the road to play against the number four team in the land in the Texas Longhorns. And man, we are here today to try to figure out once and for all if the Texas Longhorns are really back. So buckle up, this is going to be a great game, man. Make sure you smash that like button as well as hit subscribe if you're new. Let's go ahead and get into this game, man. So with all that being said, it's officially time to get this game underway, man. We see number four, Texas. Taking the field first on offense, we do get him to a third down, and honestly, that should have been a free and out. I just completely whiffed on that play. User error, Antoine Black would usually make that tackle, but instead it's now first and ten as Hodge actually takes it upfield. We might have our hands full with Kingsley Hodge today. He is a very athletic quarterback, and you know, he can pass the ball too, man. He's going to be a very difficult person to to deal with as Chase Peterson he makes the catch for 20 yards throws it right over our head too as now a couple plays later Hans dropping back there's Buster Porter with the hit what a sack 40 young defensive lineman entering his junior campaign we now get him to a third and 17 let's see if we can get these guys off the field as Hodge has all the time in the world and finds a wide open Alex White for a gain of 22 yards on that play. Man, we need to get more pressure on this quarterback. Because if he has all day to throw, he is going to pick us apart all day. And we're already seeing it right now as Texas is driving down the field. Already with two third down conversions. As Buster Porter falls on that play as well. Kingwin Hodge as a result almost with the touchdown. But we do get him to a third and short coming up here as Hodge is going to try to take it on the read. Option, but it's broken down. Looks like Zach Bones able to get in there and complete the tackle eventually. Actually, no, that was Jim Smith. That's what we are going to give the tackle to, and it's only a field goal. So now, here's the most interesting matchup of today's game. How can our offense fare against this defense? They're 97 overall. It's regarded as one of the best defenses in the entire country. So we're going to have our hands full right now. We just have to play to our strengths. You know, hopefully we get some luck going because we have, you know, we're, we're definitely not going to lie. We're a little bit overmatched. You know, they got some guys on defense. Half of these guys can make it to the NFL at the bare minimum. Guys that are starting right now is now second and ten. Brooks. Looking around, going to try to throw it over the middle and finds Rashad Bird. What a strike by Heisman candidate Noah Brooks. Going for a gain of 16, and right now this first drive, you know, we're passing the test. Going to throw short to Aiden Bemis Jr., who does take it on field for a gain of 20 yards. First down for the young tailback. As we'll uh, move ahead to the second and six. Brooks dropping back, going to try to throw it. It's Looks like the, I don't know if that's a fumble or if that's an interception, but either way, that does not look good for us whatsoever. As uh, we roll right into the pressure, forcing the fumble, and now Texas has the ball once again. So now, they take over, first and ten, first play, they find, looks like a Brandon Paris right over the middle for a gain of 17 yards on that one. Already in St. Thomas territory, looking to make this a two-possession ball game as, as Hodge does try to scramble upfield. Somehow picks up five yards. Like I said, man, this man is very, very fast. We're going to definitely have some problems if we don't contain him today. As there's another throw, looks like over to Reggie Moss, who picked up a few more yards. A little more than he should have, but it's fine. We do at least get them the third down. But can we at least get these guys off the field? Third and inches. They go to Burgess. And we can't quite plug the holes in time. It's another new set of downs for the Longhorns. So now, two plays later, they're going to run it up the middle with Burgess again. As it breaks, you know, the tackle from Antoine Black. It's finally cleaned up, thankfully. But another first down. They're moving down this field once again. They were moving pretty well in the first drive. It looks like much of the same on the second drive as well as even when a guy isn't open, there's a lane that Hodge will run through. He will take it. 
He reminds me of Vince Young in that regard. As now, third and one. Can we stop him? Yes, we do. Mac Burgess gets up in there and makes the tackle. And we do force another field goal. So what could have been a lot more devastating, you know, defense, you know, getting a small win, you know, but now we really need this offense to step up. If we can't, our defense is playing phenomenal, but if our offense can't score the points, you know, we can't keep up with these guys because, I mean, their number four ranking should say it all. They are a very elite football team. As now, speaking of which, third and four, dangerously close to going free and out. We can't afford it. Brooks looking, finds Pablo Sanchez up the field. He gets a, almost across that 50 yard line. Crossing midfield once again for the St. Thomas football team. As we'll face another third and long. Can we convert once again? Brooks looking. Going to try to throw to Sean Doyle. And it's knocked away by Willie Mitchell. I saw him at the very last second. But, you know, just threw it too late. And now Texas has the ball once again with a 6 to nothing lead. And first thing they'll do is throw to the left-hand side. Brandon Paris was just chilling all by himself as here we go. Second and ten, a couple plays later. Hodge looking around, going to try to scramble up field. No one can catch this man at first, but until finally Jesus Suttleworth comes up and makes the tackle. Another, you know, pretty solid run for this quarterback. As I'll now go to the sweep, James Sapp can't make the tackle either. He's got some blockers all of a sudden, and finally Jim Smith catches him from behind. Texas early on really doing a good job of establishing that run game as we're back at it again. First and 10. Hodge going to the right-hand side trying to get the Burgess, and he does. Antoine Black does eventually come and make the tackle, though. Another near first down for the Longhorns as they're still looking for their first touchdown, oddly enough. As here we go again, second and one, a short run, but they get another first and Twan Black read that extremely well, but just couldn't do anything about it, though. Hopefully, we can do something here. Third and long. Can we get these guys off the field? And we do. Looks like it is Ernie Steele who comes up and deflects the ball away. So, Texas makes another field goal, but no touchdown. Though, it is a two-score game, though. So, seriously, we really need to get some points on the board because we can't. Hold this Texas offense back forever. We really need the points, man. So this drive going to definitely be huge. And right now, we're in danger of going free and out. But thankfully, it's not yet. As Giovanni Coxy, Coxum makes his first collegiate catch, actually, for a gain of seven. So now, two plays later, Brooks going to try to throw it to Pablo Sanchez. But David Butler did some really good job in coverage, man. You know, really stuffed Pablo Sanchez at the line of scrimmage. So we're going to have to try this thing again, see if we can pick up the first down as we try to go over the middle, but Pablo Sanchez can't get the yards after the catch. And, you know, but we're going to have to punt this ball away once again. This offense just in complete turmoil right now, just can't get anything going right now. You know, just one of those things where we really need our defense to make a play right now. Really reminds me of the game against Arkansas. You know, when we were playing against Kyle Alexander and company. So we need something like that. Hodge looking. Going to throw it over the middle to Alex Light. A gain of 12 on the play. Another first down as the Longhorns move down the field. Another play. Another dollar. First and 10 going to Paris. Who picks up a couple more yards. Halfway to the next first down marker. And they're low-key trying to chew some time off the clock here. As, you know, they're looking to keep St. Thomas off the field as long as possible to prevent that, you know, option attack going. So we go once again, another first and 10. Hodge is going to take it up field. He's going to nearly get the first down. He doesn't quite get there. But, you know, just, you know, maybe fourth time's the charm for the Longhorns. They've been in the red zone four times a day, and this time it went in a touchdown as Matt Burgess finds the end zone. For the Texas Longhorns, as St. Thomas will find themselves down 16 to nothing in the second quarter. So here we go. Minute left here in this first half. We need points. Brooks 
Dropping back. Gonna throw a dart to Hudson the third, and he makes the catch already at midfield. Gotta keep that thing rolling, though, trying to go no huddle. We do get the snap off as Brooks will try to take it up for the first down and does not quite get there. So St. Thomas does call their first timeout. So now, second and free. Looking over in the middle, finding Pablo Sanchez. He makes the catch again for another nine yards. Another first down for the Tommies as we get to the line of scrimmage quickly. So we throw to Tyreek Miller. He makes the catch upfield already in, you know, close to the red zone. Can we turn this into points though? No, we can't because we just got baited right there, man. And what a devastating play right there. The linebacker seemingly coming out of nowhere. He like started from like the opposite side of the field. So I thought it was good and that was not the case whatsoever. So now I'm just kind of hoping and praying that we could make something happen here. At least keep it 16 to nothing. And I don't know if that's going to happen as we get beat deep. Kyle Barron was in coverage and trying to make the tackle, but, you know, did not win the one-on-one -on -one matchup there. And neither did we do that here as Brandon Paris should have had a touchdown. I'm surprised, you know, he, you know, had his foot in bounds, you know, had the awareness of a squirrel, I guess. But it doesn't matter. Texas finds the end zone again. It's another touchdown for the Longhorns. As we go into halftime, we're down 23 to nothing. We haven't had a beat down like this in a long time, and we need to figure things out. Otherwise, we'll get embarrassed. So let's go. Second half underway. We need to play like a brand new football team. This is not St. Thomas football in the first half. We got to pick it up, even if we're an underdog, according to Kurt Herdstreet. So let's go. First and 10. Brooks dropping back to pass. He's looking. Going to find Rashad Bird, who breaks the one tackle and somehow, you know, picks up five yards there. Don't know how he got it. Not going to complain, though. But you can see the stinginess of his Longhorn defense, and you can see why they are so darn good. You know, all across the board, really, no immediate weaknesses. As now, first and ten again, going to Pablo Sanchez. He still picks up another eight yards. Another near first down, as we'll get to the line of scrimmage quickly. As now, Brooks throws to Sanchez again. He makes another catch of field. That does go for a first down. Sanchez already with seven catches. He has been a reliable target for the Heisman Trophy candidate and Noah Brooks. As we'll throw again to Sanchez under pressure. Throws a dart to Sanchez again. Another gain of 13 yards on the play. He has really improved his catching. And we're seeing it in these first couple of games this season. As we do get within just a few yards of the end zone, will we finally be able to punch it in? I would love to see that as Brooks going to try to throw it to Baden and it's deflected away at the line of scrimmage. If it got to Aiden, that would have most likely been a touchdown right there. But instead, it's third and goal. Shelby going to try to run it up the gut and we can't quite get there. But I didn't want to do all this work just to settle for free. It doesn't really help us at this point. So we're going to go for it. Fourth and goal. Brooks going to take the screen, but he gets lit up at the line of scrimmage. The pitch man almost immediately gets tackled, so it left Noah Brooks no choice. And it's a turnover on down. So, you know, we'll try this again. Third and five. Hodge going to throw deep to the left-hand side is Reggie Moss. Not related to Randy Moss by any stretch of the imagination makes the catch. And it's just been an absolute worst case scenario for St. Thomas right now. But maybe we'll turn it around with this sack by Zach Bones. Looking to collect some bones on that play with another sack. Is now third and 20. Hodge dropping back. It's a screen. Buster Porter reads it and we get a man in the backfield. It's Mitchell McLaughlin. Forcing the fumble, or not, forcing the free and out, essentially. But can we finally get some points on the board, though? A couple plays later, going to try to find something, but just can't get anything going. And at this point, you know, going to have to go for the field goal. We're a little too far out, and, you know, just nothing has been working so far. So we do kick the field goal. We finally get points on the board. As we do get a studio update, Auburn gets upset by Mississippi State. 
So if Texas does hold on to a win, they can move up in the rankings. As we go back to Texas, speaking of which, they have the ball now, third and nine. Please, let's get these guys off the field. Another long third down. But we have White underneath. Nobody there to account for him initially. And Alex White was able to cross the first down marker once again. As Hodge will scramble again. This time, going to try to get past Jesus Shuttleworth, but doesn't quite do it. So please, let's get these guys off the field. Second time a charm. Third and five. Hodge dropping back. He's going to throw to the left and find Holly, who gets lit up by, by Billy Ewing. And St. Thomas has the ball right back. And maybe we can show a little bit of life here as Brooks going to throw it to Sanchez once again. He's been a really reliable target so far today. As now, you know, just trying to get as much uh, like field position as possible before the end of this quarter. You know, they're not letting us necessarily go deep, which is totally fine. As we go into the fourth quarter of play, we got to finish strong, man. We need a huge quarter in order to make this comeback happen. Let's see if we can do it. So let's go. Fourth quarter underway, and already we got a third and seven. Brooks looking good to try to throw it to the corner, and it's nearly intercepted. David Butler was there on the coverage that time. And now fourth down. We have to go for it at this point. Brooks looking. Going to find Be Bemis Jr. Doesn't have quite the burst that Coley would have. But does find the first down marker regardless. He can keep this thing going still. As we'll go to this first and ten. We throw a dart to Pablo Sanchez again. Who makes another catch. It's his 12th catch of the ball game. He's been unstoppable. Can we at least give him a touchdown to reward him? And yes, we do. Pablo Sanchez is in the end zone. Touchdown, Tommies. As we finally get our first touchdown of the ball game. But it won't matter if we don't get a stop on defense. We need it here. So let's go. Second and 12. Going to short to Brandon Paris. Little screen on the outside that goes for 10. As they're quickly uh, moving to the line of scrimmage here. Third and long coming up. Or not third and long. Third and two, I should say. Can we at least make it happen here? No, we cannot. <laughs> Hodge finds the first down marker in a little bit more. So Hodge will get his troops in the line quickly. They love playing fast, too. That's another thing. As we knew we had an interception there. Kyle Barron. They're on the coverage. You got to make those plays for us. We really needed it right there, but instead it's further along. Let's just at least get these guys off the field. Hodge throwing over the middle to Holly, and they give him the first down too. Man, just could not get any luck so far, man. As Texas is really, you know, really shoving it down her throats right now. I'm not going to lie. So let's go. Second and three. Hodge going to throw short to Howie again, and, you know, he actually breaks off a couple of tackles somehow. He was boxed in and nearly got out of it completely, but instead it's third and six now. Can we get another, you know, can we please get a stop? And after three times, we finally get it as Ernie Steele lays the lumber. So Texas does settle for a field goal, but still remains a two-possession game. We just need to get another touchdown here as Brooks. Looking good to try to throw deep to coax him, and we're very fortunate. But that did not end in an interception because, honestly, it should have. But instead, we still have the ball. Bird, he makes a nice cut up field, but still short of the first down. So we're going to have to get to the line quickly to save as much time as possible. Which we do get that first down, though, as Michael Granson Jr. does make the catch. Michael Granson, you know, is our backup quarterback, but also has some good receiving skills as well, which you do love to see is now second and 10. Brooks dropping back, going to throw to Sanchez again, who gets lit up, but still holds on to the ball regardless, though. But still, third and short. Can we pick up the first down? Yes, we do. Another first down catch for our St. Thomas receiver, man, making the t dream <laughs> teamwork, uh, you know, work out. But we also take a sack, though. The last thing that you want to do. 
especially when we're trying to save our timeouts, but we'll make up for it. A great throw up the middle to Sean Doyle. Able to nearly pick up the first down, actually. At least makes it more manageable, which will throw to Sanchez again. Because he keeps getting open, man. I can't help it. He's very close, actually, to re the receiver record for most catches in a single game. But Pablo Sanchez does go down hurt. He d looks like he might be done for the rest of his ball game. But, you know, 17 catches for 165. You can't blame him for this. You know, potential loss that we could be taking unless a miracle happens here. So let's go. Second and ten. Brooks dropping back. He's looking. Going to try to throw it, but he's sacked again. This time for a loss of nine. As we got to scramble to the line quick, we got to save those timeouts because we're definitely going to need them later on. As now, Brooks looking. Going to try to throw it. I don't know who he was going to, but either way, did not have the power and now fourth and 19 we need a drive here as Brooks drops back gonna try to throw it to the corner and it's intercepted Mitchell picking off Noah Brooks and he's eventually brought down by him just not great decision making by Willie Mitchell tried to make something happen and it doesn't work out for us so really, only hope that we have is to try to force a you know a fumble or something, a turnover. But that is exactly the opposite of what we needed as this man is gone like a girl in a country song, as Jack Legion would always say over on the Buffalo State football games. Another touchdown for the Longhorns, which does seal the deal. St. Thomas does get a couple of garbage touchdowns, you know, towards the last minute of the game. But it doesn't matter. St. Thomas drops this game on the road against number four, Texas. Your final score is 36 to 24. We still have some work to do before we compete with some of the, you know, the nationally regarded programs here in the NCAA. You know, you know, just, just got some work to do, man. All right, man. So checking out the you know the score and summary for this game, and you know our offense just absolutely rode the struggle bus until it didn't even matter at all. Like we had 21 points in the fourth quarter, but you know by then like we were just completely out of it, and there was really nothing that we could have done whatsoever. Checking out the stats for our guys though, and you know Noah Brooks, you know he he came alive more as the second half went on, but you know he was kind of flat for us for a Heisman candidate. He was 40 for 54, 462 yards, three touchdowns, but also had two key picks that, you know, really could have helped us, you know, get this dub. As for the running game, you know, the running game couldn't even, like, get anything going, so I'm not going to talk about that. Receivers, Pablo Sanchez, man, beast mode. 17 catches, 165 yards, and a touchdown. He was trying to do everything possible to keep us in this game. Michael Granson Jr. also got his first touchdown as a wide receiver. And then Sean Doyle also uh, caught a touchdown pass as well. He had three catches for 50 yards. Defensively, we were led once again by Jim Smith. Ten total tackles, four of which were TFLs. Daniel Nash wasn't too far behind. He had eight tackles for us today. And we did have five sacks, which is really nice. McLaughlin and Buster Porter both had multiple sacks. And then Antoine Black had one singular sack, but once again, still didn't force any turnovers, kind of concerning that two games in, we haven't forced any turnovers yet. We will go ahead and play against the Blue Raiders of Mid-Tennessee State. We're 2-0 against these guys in this series, but Kurt Hirsch is going to rock with them for round three. Should be a pretty good one, so if you enjoy the content here on this channel, I encourage you to smash that like button as well as hit subscribe if you're new. This is John Jake Gaming on the mic, hoping that you guys have a wonderful day. Take care, everybody.